a Toronto startup is hoping that its mosquito traps could help in the fight against the mosquito-borne Zika virus. The product actually started off as a pitch on CBC Television's Dragon's Den for a fully compostable organic waste container meant to replace that plastic bin that most people keep under their sink. Now this compostable bin, called the Green Lid, has been modified to serve a new purpose, to trap mosquitoes. Adil Kawi is a partner with Green Lid, and he has brought in one of these bins. Adil, can you describe this? I mean, it looks like one of those sort of biodegradable flower pots. Uh, tell me a bit about how it works. To how it works. Well, um, to describe it quite simply, to put it, is it's black in color, and I guess it's the shape and the size of a KFC bucket but made of egg carton material, kind Mm of. Mm -hmm. Um, We actually make it with end-of-use cardboard. So cardboard that's been recycled so many times that it can't be recycled anymore. So we're actually diverting from landfill, resulting in a carbon-negative product. And the way this trap works is it's set out to entrap mosquitoes, and within four to six weeks, it automatically starts breaking down. So the water that it contains leaks out and you don't have to ever recollect it. Okay, I want to back up yeah. for a second because originally, and I mentioned that you were on Dragon's Den, originally this exact same shape and design or similar design was uh, was on Dragon's Den as a, as a you know, bio, a compostable food waste uh, bin. And it was all backed by Dragon's Den. Yeah, it was backed by two of the dragons, Arlene Dickinson and Dave Chilton, who continue to work with us as part owners of the firm. Um, And Greenlid launched our compostable compost bin about a year ago. Now it's national and it's available across the country. We're looking at launching in the U.S. next. And the benefit of that product is that it breaks down completely. And so you can put it in your backyard compost or put it in your green bin. And 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 it avoids those icky sort of bags that you have to And it doesn't uh, smell. It doesn't doesn't leak. Yeah, exactly. All the ick factor, as you would put it. Is so gone. that was the original pitch, and that's what the dragons, den, the dragons liked. But how did it morph into the idea of a mosquito trap? Yeah, actually, the Australian government, um, you know, government in Queensland reached out to us after seeing the original product. And we worked together with them in developing this over the past 18 months. And we took the same technology that prevents this paper cardboard substrate from leaking to uh, modify it slightly to make it leak in a set period of time, in that four to six weeks. Because what happens is current OV traps, mosquito traps that are set out, which contain water, once the insecticide's efficacy has run out, it becomes a breeding ground because it stands still water. So you have to go back and collect it. Otherwise, it can become more of a problem, more of a vice and a virtue, if you will. This one automatically bleeds out. So it's okay, just in the right amount of time. And then the testing has shown that the kill rate of the mosquitoes is 95 to 100%. So it is very effective. So this this mosquito trap version of this uh, KFC bucket, as you're calling it, uh, so it's biodegradable. It gets put in locations where there's a concern, whether that be a backyard barbecue, that some, you know, personal recreational use, or as you say, in areas where there's outbreaks of mosquito-borne illnesses, and you you put those there with an insecticide in the bucket and just let it catch the bugs? Basically, at the bottom of the bucket, there is a little bit of bait that we put in there, and towards the top, it's made of paper, we spray it with insecticide, biodegradable insecticide. When there's an outbreak, you fill it with water and set it out. The mosquito, a female mosquito only flies about 200 meters, And so once she has had a blood meal, as they call it, she will come and land on this because she has the urge to lay her eggs. Upon touching the edge, the insecticide, she dies. And the insecticide itself is quite hydrophobic, so it doesn't come off with the water in the bucket. And then she falls into the water with her eggs, and she's killed. And this continues happening until the efficacy of the insecticide is gone. Wow. How many of these do you need for a given area? What's the, what's the range? We recommend about 30 of them per acre. In like a small house, you can probably put five or six out in the backyard. It'll be good for a month, the four to six weeks. The Australian government tends to put out between 50 to 100 per infection. Tell me a bit more about that, mm-hmm. what, what they because they purchased so many uh, in to tr- an attempt to combat dengue fever, as I mentioned, which is spread by mosquitoes. So tell me about how they're using them. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, any mosquito-borne illness can be combated with this. So dengue fever, Zika, as well as malaria, and I guess more relevant to us, West Nile. Um, for any of these diseases, once there is an outbreak, 
you basically surround the area with these mosquito traps. So what it, what it prevents is kind of creates a net around the infected person or persons in the area. And the mosquitoes that are carrying it come to it, grab it to it, and are killed and decimates the population slowly. So dengue is the key one in that part of the world, in Australia, as well as other countries like India and Pakistan. Malaria is another one. Um, even though there are vaccinations for malaria, anti-malarials, everyone can't use them. They can't be used for too long, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, of course, there's Zika, where the two key countries that have been impacted firstly was Brazil, now Colombia, and it's continued to spread. Is there a risk, uh, and I know this is a lot of people's fantasy, you know, that we eliminate the mosquito altogether? I mean, does this, does this have any impact on, you know, the ecosphere if we lose such significant numbers of mosquitoes? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the numbers you're losing um, compared to the global population of mosquitoes, it's not a sp- necessarily a pest that is close to extinction. And you're putting these out targeted specifically around areas once there is an infection detected or an outbreak. Okay, that um, makes sense. So, yes. so now, you, as I say, you're sort of marketing the traps as a solution to fight Zika virus, which a lot of people are talking about uh, recently. How do you go about using them for that? Um, how do we go about actually getting them deployed mm-hmm. out? So we, I mean, we're a small company. We're a startup out of Ontario. We're 100% Ontario owned. We produce everything in Ontario. We source everything here. So we're doing what we can to work our networks and reach out. But, you know, through programs like this, we had a segment on CBC TV, actually, a couple of days ago. And just as a result of that, we've had people contacting us from various countries saying, tell us more. We want to learn more about this. And we're working with trade commissions, Canadian trade commissions abroad, as well as foreign um, embassies in Canada and consulates in Canada and starting the conversation because this is, in our opinion, one of the best ways, far superior to spraying or netting to combat these issues and significantly cheaper because these traps cost somewhere between a dollar and two and it's carbon negative. So it's really one of those things that makes us think, why wouldn't you? No, right? indeed. It's, it's, it's a, it's a well, no-brainer. Well, and as, as I was saying earlier, I mean, there's been so much concern, uh, legitimately so, about the Zika virus. So it's so good to hear of something that's a, a possible solution, an elegant solution at that. Thank you so much for explaining us uh, about it and all the best. Thank you so much. And it's shows Keep like this. Yeah, that get us connected to the right people. So thank you very much. Adil Cowie is the spokesperson and a partner in Greenlid. They make biodegradable compost bins and mosquitoes mosquito traps, and I tweeted out a photograph so you can see a visual uh, to go with uh, that conversation. That's at CBC Here and Now.